water broke. So panted my soul after thee, O oh Lord. Feed us, Lord. Feed us until we want no more. Today, amen, we present to some and introduce to others Minister Wayne Nicholson. Let us receive him with a hearty amen. amen. Once again, amen. amen. Minister Wayne Nicholson. Reach out. 
Help somebody else and watch how that thing just flow. Just flow. Just flow. From heart to heart to breast to breast in Jesus' name. That's how God works. And God is wonderful in Jesus' name. He's a loving God. He's a caring God. I love him. I love him. I'm, I'm more and more each day in Jesus' name. They sing like that. I know we sing this song like really often growing up, sweeter as the day go by. Sweeter as the day go by. You know what God is sweet and sweet and sweet. You know what? It ain't that he hasn't been sweet all along, just our sour. <laughs> our sour. Trying to you trying to miss Christ with all the other stuff that you want to do is give you a sour taste. It gives you a sour taste. You be like, you know what? They said it was sweet, but it don't taste too sweet. Mama told me I had to go to church. It don't taste too sweet. Why you got to make me go? You gonna make me serve the Lord? Oh, you on your mind? This is sour. This don't taste too good. I think I run when I get a chance. But the more and more I ran, the more and more it started to stir down on the inside. Now I realize. Now they say it gets sweeter as the day go by. It gets sweeter. It gets sweeter and sweeter in Jesus' name. Isn't it? Nothing that I've done great. But because God is good, God is real, and he is, you know, he just, he's just awesome. And we love him for that this morning. We give him everything that belongs to him and that belongs to us. We say, Lord, you are our king. You are our God. You are our peace in Jesus' name. And we thank you this morning. As we prepare to go over into the word of God, we ask you to, in Jesus' name, to turn with us over to, I'm going back to what the uh, scriptures that I read last Sunday doing our devotion, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, we'll begin our reading at verse 1, and we'll read down to verse, uh, I believe I had down for verse, I just flip to my notes here to make sure I'm telling you right, I think it's verse 11. Yes, Colossians chapter 3, and we're going to read down to verse 11, and as you find it, you can stand with us. Verse 11 reads, Wherefore there is neither Greek nor Jew, 
circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Amen, amen. We would like to use for a topic this morning. Remember, you are new. Remember, you are new. Gracious God, as we prepare to come this morning to bring forth your word into your people, we ask you right now, Lord, to help us, Lord, to be a vessel used by you this morning. Send your anointing, Lord, in Jesus' name, that make bring it forth your word, Lord, in Jesus' name, a pleasure, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, that your people may hear, that your people may understand, Lord, that we all may, Lord, hear your word. And, Lord, not that we hear your word, help us to go and to be doers of your word also, Lord. As your word says, help us to lean not upon our own understanding, but help us in all our ways to acknowledge you. Be saved, be well, direct thy path. Lead us and guide us into all truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated at this time. In Jesus' name. We, as we said this morning earlier on, uh, as we come this morning to be read from this Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1 through 11 as we read last Sunday during our devotion part of our morning worship in Jesus' name, and we bring it back this morning to you that it's a word that I often, before I come up to read the scripture, and I, you hear me say this before, that I can open the Bible and flip to a scripture and can find a scripture to read it, and it will be true, but the Bible, every word of God is true in Jesus' name, and we can flip to it and see, but I like to, I like to uh, just put a little time in in Jesus' name. The Lord lead and guide me on what to say, what to read, about the words that come out of my mouth. If you don't put a word in my mouth, that the Bible say the same thing. I say the same thing over and over until you put a new word into my mouth. But as he gave me this scripture last Sunday, it was the, the new year come in the first Sunday of the year in Jesus' name of 2022. And, and he gave me this and, and I read the scripture and Filling lines into with the morning message in Jesus' name. So I said, Well, Lord, what would you have me to bring to your people? And when I finish from one second Sunday to the next second Sunday, I treat it like I just took communion, as we were often we were taught. When you take communion, you start to examine yourself on Monday for the next communion in Jesus' name. Start to check yourself. And I and I like to go through it. I just went through it and I from second Sunday to second Sunday. I tried to prepare myself for the you never know when something might happen in Jesus' name. You may be called to do a certain thing in Jesus' name. You may be called to do something that you're not too familiar with in Jesus' name. Or you may, that's why the Bible tells us to study, to show thyself approved, a worker that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But it also tells us to make sure, be ready, for you know not the hour, the minute, the second, when the Son of Man shall appear in Jesus' name. So that gives us example. We ought to make sure that we Keep ourselves ready. Keep a word of God always at your right hand and at your left hand. Always in the front of you, always in the back of you. Always keep something of God which in Jesus' name. And the only way you can do that, you got to make sure that you're in his word. Mm -hmm. You have to be in his word in Jesus' name. So as we look at the book of Colossians over the week in Jesus' name, as we prepare to come up to here, I said, Lord, if this was your word, as I went on early on during the week, God, it was, it was just speaking to me. I flipped this stuff and it showed me, telling me something about being new, being new. And it goes on. But as the week waned on, we get closer and closer to Sunday, new went away across that in the left field or something. It went away. Where did the new come back? Where is the new? New is gone now. New is gone. But then I get here in the Word of God and we sing the song and this, that, and other. And I look and I listen to it and I was coming out of the office and on our, uh, on our bulletin, our program, you look at the front of it, look what it says. Those things unto the Lord, it was a new song. The word new has appeared again, has appeared again. Then I look down below it, it says, Happy New Year. Now you would think we would have said Happy New Year, which we did. It would been in the program from last week. But it shows you how we often, and we're not patting ourselves on the back, and I know the rest of us don't. Sister Dowling does the program. She's not patting herself on the back. Elder Martin, our leader in Jesus, he's not patting herself on the back, but we give God all the applause this morning. It shows how he brings things all together. He brings things.
things all together. That, 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 that what you call being on one accord. Hallelujah. Called the King James call, King James called it being on one accord. Being of the same mind. And we not not the mind of Martin, Dowden, and Nicholson, but it's the mind of Christ. Right. The mind of the one who died and rose for you in Jesus' name. The one that the one that he made the way. When you you y'all think y'all know we don't think no more highly of ourselves than what we ought to think. But we thank God. Oh, yeah. We thank God for him doing what he's doing. He's doing the thing in us. He's doing the work. He's doing the newness that is in us. He's doing all the things that 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 and so that, that we have talked, we have said earlier, he's doing all the things that we've been trained to do, the things we've been taught to do, the things that we've been shown to do, the things we've seen people live, all we're doing is bringing it back. Bring all those things that was planted in us, bringing it back. Bringing it back, bringing it back. That's why, the, that's why the word of God is so real. It's been right that I bring all things back to your remembrance. No good that you have done, because honestly speaking, you forgot it, Wayne. You forgot it. But it's me. It's the spirit that lives down on the inside. I'm God. I change is not, and I don't forget. I don't forget. The only thing, God, that he's going to forget is your sin. When you turn around and say, no, what I want to be with you, he said, I cast your sins in the sea of forgetfulness. They go. They go now. What, what, that, what, what our situation, our issues come up, we remember them. And we hold ourselves down. Saying, Lord, Lord, I, 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 I can't do it because, you know what, I this and I that. And remember when I did that? But God, I, I was going to make that. You knew. You knew. You knew. You knew. So over here in Colossians, as I studied a little bit on the book of Colossians, Paul started out writing to the Colossians in Jesus' name. He started out writing in there. Paul didn't find the church at Colossae. He did not find the church at Colossae, but he had ministers. He had brothers. He had people that he trained and he taught and he sent them out to establish these different places. Go out and give the word of God in Jesus' name. And I believe it was Ephodites that went out and he found he found this, the people over in Colossae. He told them about how God worked. Told them how Jesus Christ came and he died for you. And he rose on the third day that you may have life. And that you may have it more abundantly. Uh, Paul wrote to them. And this after Paul wrote this letter to them. After the, uh, there were some things going on in that church in Jesus' name. That, that didn't sit well with Ephodites. And so what he did was he went... And he confided in Paul. He went and talked to Paul a little bit about it. Said, Paul, some things going on that we need that, that, that you need to address. Help me address in this church in Jesus' name. And that's what Paul did. Paul did. Paul wrote this letter back to Colossae in Jesus' name. He wrote this letter back to them, telling them in Jesus' name. Just, 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 that's just a little nugget you can keep in your mind. You got to remember, people, God. God has authority. God has rules. God has regulation. God has the way things. God has an order in Jesus' name. And sometimes things get hard for some of us to bear sometimes. Sometimes we got to take it to somebody that, 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 that that's a little bit more, uh, for the lack of a better word, advanced, or a little bit more experience, or a little bit more knowledge, or even a little bit more closer walk, if I dare say, than to God. And maybe you yourself may feel like that you haven't got there in Jesus' name. But take it to somebody that can help you out along the way, that can encourage you and build you up. That's what Ephodites did. He went to Paul. He said, Paul, I need some help. Ain't nothing wrong with asking for some help. There is nothing wrong with asking for some help in Jesus' name. Here too, they, they was down in, when they was out in battle, they, they came into Bethel. They said, here too, the Lord have helped us. So God helped them. Do you think he won't help you today? He don't have a respect. There's nothing wrong would have asking for a little help. But while Paul was down there, Ephodites come and he write to Paul and be addressed the issues. And there was a lot of things going on there in Colossae in Jesus' name. Just to be familiarized with Colossae a little bit. Colossae was about a hundred miles or so from Ephesus. Ephesus, to give or take a hundred miles from Ephesus. Ephesus was a was a, was a, was, a, was a city, a town that was on the, along the coastline in Jesus. There was a lot of coming and going, a lot of business, a lot of commerce going on there. So, and just to, just to bring it into focus a little bit, think about us, what we hear in Littleton, North Carolina today. Think about us. Think about uh, Colossae. We've been in Colossae 
at Everson Bay, Wilmington, about 100 miles or so from us in Jesus. And I know Colossae was a little bit inland. You, you know, come on into the, the inland a little bit. Get away from all the water and all this stuff. Get away from the coastline. So there lies Colossae. Colossae was there. And they had representatives uh, in the book of Acts. And when they, when, when they talked about the second chapter of the book of Acts, when the day of full of Pentecost would fully come, that how they had representation there themselves at the when all the people had gathered back to Jerusalem and they was and they heard heard the, heard these guy Galileans that they thought was ignorant and dumb speaking in their language. And they was like, uh, they were like, who are these Galileans speaking and talking in our language, but they're praising God, the God the Almighty one. And they were, I I get the words mixed up a little bit of candy said. Uh, per se, he liked, he liked the name for all of it, was Perva, Perva, Perva. Look in verse 10 in Acts chapter 2, verse 10. And that's the very first one of that particular one as they list off the name. But Colossae was a city in Perga, Perga. I think it's P-H-A-R-G-I-A, I believe it is. But they was a, every, Colossae was a city in Perga. So they had representation of the Holy One. They, somebody there heard these Galileans speaking that Peter talked about these are not drunk as you suppose. Uh -huh. They heard, they heard all of this. They what they had a representation said, okay, men and brethren, what must I do then? What do I need to do? They had this representation and so they were able to go back to their homeland. You are representation in your community, in your city, in your town, on your workplace. In your uh, uh, Snapchat group, Come on. whatever you want to call it, I got to get you to, to to the new school people as well. In your in your uh, in your work group or, or or in your friend zone or in your life zone or whatever the situation may be, you are that you are that communication. You are that line to Christ. And somehow or another, we find ourselves because everybody else. It's kind of on this end of the spectrum. Nobody mentioned Christ. Nobody said anything about Christ. So we find ourselves, you know what? If they don't mention, I'm going to keep it to myself. Then. But you know, Christ can't be put in a box and be hidden. He can't be put in your life and be hidden. If he's really down on the inside of you, he's going to burst out. Jeremiah tried that. We had an example. Jeremiah tried that because things didn't go the way that he wanted to go. He said, Lord, I won't make no more mention of you. I think I keep my mouth closed about you now. But Jeremiah said it was just like fire in my bones. I can't hold this no longer. I have to say something. I have to speak of the goodness of the Lord. I have to say where he brought me from. Down here in Colossae. Colossae, they there. And Colossae was also not too far away from that church over in Revelation called Laodicea. We're not too far away from that. And we are, if you've been, if you read the Bible long enough, and most of us in here in the Bible look around and see, you heard of the Laodiceans. You heard of, but our new school people, I dare to say some of them may not have heard of the Laodicea. Some of our new school, our our people of today, we're talking in the book of Deuteronomy, which is they say is the second law. The, the book the book of Deuteronomy talks to people that came after they come out of Egypt. They were spent some years in the in the wilderness, and now they don't come. These are the new people, that, the ones that was that originally came out of Egypt. Only two made it. Only two made it. So now we're talking to some new people. And man, today, believe a lot of people, God, you made the blah, 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 blah. We heard this before. You know what? But we got to reach the new people. Somebody have not heard about Christ yet. We have some young people that in our workplace, in our schoolhouse, in our homes, and at our grocery stores, in our mall, that can't even tell you. They can say, tell me something about the 23rd Psalm. They cannot tell you. They won't be able to tell you. Say, just read me some portion of the 23rd Psalm. I, as I look around at who's the simple here now, most of us have not. We can just about quote the 23rd Psalm by memory right now. 
And we think it's a small thing. Oh, okay, you just read the 23rd Psalm. You know what? You better thank God that somebody read to you the 23rd Psalm. You better thank God that somebody told you about, you know what? You better put your head right here a little bit. You better read the word of God sometimes. It even was so much so that even that even the, even when we go to school, when we was in school, as, as pastors like to say so often, it, it, it was during my time too, but it, you can start to see that it was starting to phase out a little bit. It was starting to phase out during my time. Mom, uh, Renee and I are on the same ball ball. She's a little bit older than me. But we along the same ballpark, along the same time, it's, these things start to fade out a little bit. And now, as we look around, you, you, you will, you will have yourself in such a mess if you go in there and try to read something from the Bible at the school places now. You will have a mess on your hand. And don't go to your job and talk about reading something. Wait a minute, man, that ain't what I pay you to do. I don't pay you to do that. I don't pay, don't you better no, you better not. You better not. But now I can go there and I can tell all the dirty jokes I want to. Matter of fact, I can go there and put the God that I serve, I can put him down. I can degrade the God that I serve. And it'll be all right. I mean, sometimes I, I went to work and I heard somebody say something, it, it kind of offended me a little bit. This new TikTok thing they got going on now, where they said, Holy Spirit, activate. Yeah. Holy Spirit, activate. I said, wait a minute now. This, this ain't no joke here now. You're talking about some, what now? It, it offended me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. I mean, but they weren't doing it in a spiritual way. This is all about a joke. We don't took the word of God as a joke now. We have taken the word of God as a joke. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking, I'm talking about me too. Remember, anytime you hear me speak, you just say, you, you say to yourself, well, I ain't talking about himself now. That's what you say. And that's what I'm doing. But I need God to make, I need God to make me new. I need to be made new. For, for years, I practiced some of the wrong things, knowing the right thing to do. Knowing the right thing to do. But I practiced some wrong stuff. I went to some wrong places. I did some wrong things, but by the grace of God, by the grace of God, I stand here now and I don't take no credit for myself. As a matter of fact, I get the credit for all the ones that labor before me. The one that said he's going to be something. He's going to know what? He's going to be more than just even, you know what? Even when I was in school, my school teacher, my mom getting a test and would tell me, you know what? There's something special about him, but he just won't apply himself. He just won't apply himself. There's something special about him, though. I went so far as, man, I thought I was an alien. If I was talking about alien, I invited my mother as such. When I went to school, I put a clothes hanger on my head. And all my mama could do when she go to school was drop her head. That's not what I'm talking That's not what I'm talking That's how far we can get away from Christ. You, 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 it's, it's, I'm telling you, the, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. That's how far we can get. If a daddy went to Paul, he talked to Paul. Said, Paul, look at this. There's some things going on here, man. I need you to help address these issues. Address these issues, and that's what you know. What if we ask God for help? God will give us help. But now, remember now, when you ask God for His help, His help is right. His help is holy. His help may even compromise you a little bit. It may put you in a seem to be a bad position. Ask Paul. When Paul asked for help, when he was saw, it blinded him. It blinded Paul. It blinded him. He said, Lord, who are thou that I persecute? He said, you persecuted me. Jesus, I'm the one. I'm the one that died. You persecuted me. Don't you know, Paul, it is hard to kick against the brick? Don't you know that? Then Paul had to come to the middle of the day, Lord, tell me what I need to do. How can I be new? 
How can I be new? He said, God, tell you what, get up. You can't see them. And remember, when God do something, he don't do nothing under a rock that's hid. But as Paul was then Saul, as he rose up, he had people that were riding up with him. They hear the voice, but they saw no man. So they said, there's something going on. Have you ever been in a position where you something happened? You said, something's going on. Something's going on. I don't know what it is. You can, you can feel it. You can even hear it. There's something going on. But you said, you know what? I think I'm going to go keep on going this way. Keep on going this way. But when God started to do some things, he said, Paul, you go ahead on. You go ahead on. I'm just trying to give you who Paul is. Paul trying to establish himself. If you look in the very first uh, verse of chapter 1, that Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. Paul had to establish himself. He had to let them know who he was. He had to let them know who called me and who told me what to do. And I heard and I asked because I wanted to be new. I wanted to change in my life. I've been doing this the wrong way for a long time, thinking I'm doing it right. Half the time we think we're doing it right, and we don't convince ourselves in our mind that this is, it ain't so bad. It ain't so bad. It ain't that bad. Well, I don't, I don't really, I don't curse out my elderly. I do respect them. Well, I do help the elderly cross the street. Well, I don't do this, I don't do that. But you know what? To, to all unrighteousness is sin. All unrighteousness is sin. And then it goes a little far and says, to you who know to do right. Oh, oh boy. Now that, now that burned in me for a long time. To you who know to do right. To you. <laughs> it's sin. It's sin. If you know to do right. You know it, but you are new. You are new. You are new in Christ. These Colossians. Paul had to establish who he was and, and what was going on. But then he said, look, to Timotheus, our brother. And Paul included Timotheus, Timothy in this, to let them know. And he want to familiarize himself, let you be familiar with who, who I dealt with, who I had my dealings with, who my association with. He said, Timothy, you know Timothy. People in Colossae knew who Timothy was. So that was Paul's connection to Colossae. He wanted to let them know who they were. That's why I told you, you are a representation of Christ somewhere in your life. Some place that you go, you represent Christ. You're not Christ, but your Christ is down on the inside of you, and he should be acting. He should be presenting himself. And by you showing up, by you showing up as you walk in, that's why they ask you, who do you think you are? <laughs> Who do you think you are? Paul had to let them know, this is who I am. Hallelujah. This is who I am. He let them know, this is who I am. He let them know, by the will of God, I stand here, but I write to you, Colossae. I write to you. So he writes to them. He tells them, to, to Timotheus, you know him, you're familiar with him, just like Paul had to do himself. Remember when Paul first came into the church, us Christians was a little bit afraid of Paul. The world was a little bit afraid of him, but their father, which is the devil, said, don't be afraid of them. But the world was a little bit afraid of you. Not much now. Don't you went out there and think you big and bad now. But the world was a little bit afraid of you because who's in you? Because the light that you shine when you walk in that dark place, they said, who turned on this light? Who turned on this light? Before Paul coming to the there was a little bit of fun. So Paul know how to make sure that I connect somebody to it. You know, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm a good fella now. I'm a good fella. That's why he 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 kind of mentioned Timothy to them. To let them know I'm all right. I'm no, I'm no witch doctor, I'm no booey booey or wooey wooey, but Timothy knows all about me. Timothy knows my work. Timothy knows, Timothy knows how I do things. Timothy knows where my grace comes from. Come Timothy knows all about it. Paul himself, before he got into the church, 
he had to, by them being a little bit afraid of him, Barnabas had to come along. If you've been around a little bit while, you know about Barnabas. Barnabas took Paul in and said, come on in, come on in. I'll, 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 I'll get you in with the, with the apostles. Because the apostles are all like, no, no. He got letter. He got letters. He can destroy us. He can, he can come and take us and take us in right now. But Paul ran into Barnabas. Now, before he got to Barnabas, he had to meet up with Ananias, who was also afraid of him again. But the only way Paul could get his sight is he had to go visit Ananias. He had to 